Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. Today I'm going to catch you up on a few of my projects and I have decided to make a change in the way that I'm knitting a cardigan. I also have some progress on my Pohula pullover so I want to chat a little bit about that and announce the winner of the fiber from last week. So stick around and we will get right into it. Welcome to Young Folk Knits. My name is Casey and on this channel I really like to chat about my love of fiber arts. So there's a lot of knitting, sometimes some spinning and sewing and whatever else I might be getting up to at the moment. Occasionally I will share a little bit about life on a small farm here in Arkansas where my husband, myself, and our children are beekeepers and we love gardens and chickens and animals and just spending our time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like it might be your cup of tea, make sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any new video content. Today is gonna be a little bit of a briefer episode. I was not at home for a lot of this past week and I have been sick, so there's just also not a lot of progress on everything, but I do want to show you what I've been up to this week. And I have not bought any new yarn um, or that kind of acquisitions, but I did reach into my stash of books and I want to show you a couple things that I had seen as I was flipping through some of the pages. And I also want to show you a new organizer that I'm going to be using for my needles and notions and knitting accessories. I want to say a big thank you to all of you who participated in the Wool Along, which was hosted by Wooly Knit and myself. That did come to an end. It was so much fun. I'm personally still working on my heirloom quilt cardigan it may be something that I kind of work on in tandem with my other projects through the next few months but I definitely want to have that ready to wear this fall so I'm not going to give myself too long to finish it but I am a huge huge fan of the Wooly Knit British wool cones. I think they're absolutely amazing. So I'm mainly using the British wool for my quilt squares and then I'm going to be using a cone of the um, merino wool to do my sleeves and my button band. So I'm excited to get that finished up. The winner of the 75 pound gift card for Wooly Knit is going to be announced on Instagram. So I'll put a link in the description where you can find my Instagram account and I will save it to my story highlights in Instagram and Wooly Knit will be sharing that as well. So hopefully the winner can contact one of us. Okay, first up, I wanna chat a little bit about my step-by-step -step cardigan that I am test knitting for Florence Miller, who is um, handmade by Florence on both YouTube and Instagram. This is something that I am knitting with the Noro Madara in the color 01 Sake. And this yarn has really had a big, I don't know, it's had a lot of attention lately by a lot of different people. Uh, I, I know also known as Nora Knits, she is knitting a cardigan in this as well. And it's I just know that it's very popular because you can't find this colorway in stock anywhere. So if it's a 
yarn that you really desperately want then if you ever find it somewhere in stock I'd probably go ahead and snag it up <laughs> because otherwise you're gonna you know have to just keep waiting for it to become available I am using it in this test for a raglan cardigan it's a bit oversized and it's going to have a double knit button band otherwise it's completely classic style raglan with um the very simple classic raglan increases every other row no fancy shaping which i love i love the classic simple raglan one by one ribbing and double knit button band. I did split for the sleeves. Last week I had one roll left. So I split for the sleeves. I'm done with my neck shaping. All I'm doing is knitting a stockinette body. No more increases for that V neck shape. I'm done with that. And so I'm just knitting and purling now. And it's nice to have that kind of knit when I'm watching TV or doing something that I can't really give a lot of concentration to. This is perfect. And I've got about six inches of the body. Nope. I've got about five inches of the body since I have split four sleeves. It's due this month. And if I get in a crunch, I mean, I could easily finish the body of this in a day if I really devoted some time to it. It's being knit on US 9 or is that five millimeter? needles five and a half millimeter needles so um it's a very quick knit i just knit on so many things at once that i'm not quick um, but i'm excited because the sleeves on this i'm obviously going to be able to use a 16 inch circular needle for a lot of the sleeve and that is just going to fly it's such a you know five and a half millimeter needle in the round stockinette only that will go really quickly. So I'm actually excited to get to the sleeves on this and not be having to knit stockinette flat. It really doesn't bother me to do that. And I have found that I don't row out at all. And the reason for that is actually kind of funny. Most people are much looser with their pearls, but my pearls are so tight that they balance out with my knit stitches and there's literally no difference whatsoever between my my knit and my purl stitches so i never have any problems with uh difference in gauge or like even if i switch between flat knitting and knitting in the round if you do have a difference depending on the type of yarn you use i find that blocking cures most evils <laughs> so it'll probably fix that for you if i ever have some kind of noticeable difference but because of some reason i do find that blocking will fix that for me also if your pearls are way looser than your knits you can have a interchangeable needle with two different sizes so one end would be your smaller needle like a let's say a you would use a five and a half millimeter for the side that you are knitting and then on the other end of your needle whenever you come to the back so you're turning your work and purling back you would have a size five millimeter needle that you would purl back you could of course do that with two fixed circular needles as well but that's always an option if you tend to row out which is very very common okay next up i want to show you my pohula Pull over. I hope I said that correctly. Sorry, very sweetly sent me a voice message <laughs> with the correct way to say it. So this is a pullover for the Pohyola cow. Pohyola, Pohyola, Pohyola. That sounds Italian. This is not an Italian language. <laughs> Sorry, lives in Finland. Okay, so it's so it's Finnish. Pohyola, Pohyola, Pohyola. Pohyola. Nope. Hang on. Let's let Sorry tell us how to say it. Okay, Sorry. Tell us how to say this. Oh, here it is. Hi, it's Pohyola. Pohyola. That was pretty good. Okay, so this is just an extremely beautiful color work pullover and it's knit with three colors you have your main color and two contrasting colors it is a fingering weight sweater and i am using some yarn that was um 
that is from Saunder Yarn Co. And it was kindly provided to me as yarn support for this knit along. Y'all, I gotta tell you, I'm obsessed. I'm absolutely obsessed with these colors. So first of all, I have the color offline and it is my first contrasting color one, which is the color here at the top portion. And then you're adding in both of your other colors. So I have my main color, which is full English and my contrast color too, which is personal space. I am wildly obsessed with <laughs> this color pairing. So I have reached the portion where you know you're knitting with three colors at a time and I've been there for a while now I'm at a little spot where I am only knitting with two colors you know I've got a few rows of that and no purling you do have quite a bit of purling in here as well but it is not difficult if you can do color work you can do this it is not difficult at all so the only thing I will say is that when I'm knitting color work with only two colors, I can use my background color that I hold in my right hand and then my dominant color I will hold in my left hand. With this hand, I will flick and with this hand, I will pick. So I am an English style knitter, but I can do this for color work. I can knit by uh, picking or continental knitting for you know color work it's fine it doesn't bother me one thing i am not proficient at though is purling in a continental style therefore the fact that we're doing three colors which i've not mastered doing that with three colors what i end up having to do is still at some point lay down a color and pick up a color so that does slow me down a lot. But then when you're adding in purling and you're purling with the dominant color, which is in the hand that I would be picking with, I can't do that proficiently. Um, and I don't want to because at this point I would not have an even tension. And so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> when I'm on the rows where I'm purling with the dominant color, I lay all my yarns out in front of me. I have one yarn here on my left hand side which is my most dominant color then i have my second dominant color in the middle and then i'll have my background color to the right and i leave those balls in those places and that keeps everything from getting tangled up and whenever i lay my background color down i will pull it that towards me so that it's laid over my needle towards me and then I you know will pick up and knit with the dominant colors or purl. So yes it is more involved and it does slow me down on those rows but it's worth it because this is beautiful and it's special and <laughs> I am so excited to get this finished up. Also I think that Sonder yarn is such an amazing yarn for color work because it's not a slick merino. It is a BFL Massa mix and while it's soft, it's not that merino soft. It has some rustic grip to it which creates amazing color work. I really love it and I know from prior experience that it will bloom beautifully and fill in any gaps that may appear in the color work so i'm very pleased with how this is knitting up sorry does have you actually go up two needle sizes for the color work section so i did my ribbing on a um three millimeter needle i believe uh, us two and a half it's not really a common needle size in the u.s if you get interchangeable needles from the u.s it mostly will never have that included but i knit a lot of european patterns and i find that the three millimeter needle is one of the most commonly used sizes so it's been well worth the investment for me to have a three millimeter needle in a 16 inch circular and in a 32 inch circular i use those a lot so I did a three millimeter needle on a 16 inch circular for my ribbing. And then when I started um, the very next row, I went up to a US six or a four millimeter 
16 inch circular needle. And I'm gonna be using that throughout the color work. As I get more stitches on it from increasing, I will move to a 30 32 inch needle. So it's going really well. And I absolutely love these colors together. If y'all wanna join in the knit along, it is lasting from the beginning of March through April 30th, the last day of April, 2024. So on Instagram, you can use the hashtag Pohiola, K-A-L, Pohiola Cal. And in Ravelry, you can um, post your uh, projects and finished objects to a Ravelry thread. There's also a chatter thread for the knit along. So that can be found on Sorry Nordland's Ravelry forum group and I will include the link to that in the description box of this video. I also this past week cast on my pressed flowers cardigan. I only have a tubular cast on and like a couple rows done <laughs> and I'm knitting that in this Primrose Yarn Company a Roan Sport base in the color Hazel, I believe. The other thing I just cast on this week and haven't done anything with is my tessellated cardigan, which I also basically just cast on. I did my tubular cast on and have worked like three or four rows. So I've only done that much. And because of that, I will show you all my progress for that later. Other thing, the other cardigan that I have been working on and I've decided to stop <laughs> and do it a little differently is my Porter cardigan for my husband. So he, I decided he's knit worthy to receive a garment this year and he decided to have me knit him the Porter cardigan, which is a pattern you can find on the Hudson and West website. And they did very kindly provide yarn support for this project. My husband's so excited. It is got these lovely all over cables and it's being knit up in their amazing <laughs> blend of Corydell and Merino wool. It's absolutely fabulous. It's so soft, but it's got a great bounce. It's very round. It's just a great yarn. It's a very cabled sweater. It's got so much texture, a lot of charts in it, and it, it's definitely a pattern that you'll knit if you're up for a challenge, and it will be well worth it because it's stunningly beautiful. However, it is a seamed garment. So because of that, I find it's very important to have as close to identical as possible sides and pieces that are going to be seen together. And I was already thinking about doing this, but I had went ahead and cast on and I was going to stop after I finished the ribbing and start the other sleeve but I had another person that has already made this comment and suggest that I knit the sleeves two at a time and it just really solidified in my mind that was the best option. I got kind of excited so I did a few rows of the different charts on this but I stopped because I want to I don't like doing ribbing two at a time so I want to do the ribbing Plus, it's on a different size needle. Uh, but I want to do the ribbing on my second cuff. And then once I do that and I get to the exact same spot as I am here, I'm going to just slide it onto this needle. And that way I can do um, two at a time sleeves. They're knit flat, which is nice. And I'm just going to wind up another ball of yarn to work the other sleeve in. And I think that'll be very helpful in having them come out to the exact same dimensions. So that is my plan. This is knit, I think it's on US 7s. Yeah, four and a half millimeter needles for the um, sort of body of this sleeve, the main fabric. And then the ribbing was on fives, I think. So I'm gonna finish that up. It wouldn't take me very long at all. It's a worsted weight yarn, US 5 needles for the ribbing. I can definitely 
crank that out pretty fast and get it to the point where I can put it back on here and be able to work those two at a time. Plus, I think it will be so much easier to keep up with where I'm at and I just think overall it is a wise decision. I want to say a huge thank you. I had a few of you send me um, a pattern as a gift from my wish list and I wanted to say thank you so, so, so much. That really has helped me out because um, as you all know, as knitters, it does get expensive to buy the patterns. So it was such a very generous and kind gift to send that to me and a show of support for the podcast. I truly, truly appreciate it. I had a lot of the patterns that I'm very much wanting to start soon in the wish list. So the fact that some of those were sent over just made my week. I really, really appreciate that. So I'm hoping to actually cast a couple of those patterns on shortly, but I want to finish my step-by-step -step cardigan first and have that completely done and off the needles, which I think I can do this week. I do not think it will take me very long. And that way I'll just have my pohiola pullover, which I do kind of have, you know, the fact that I want to get it done by the end of the knit along in the back of my mind, but it's not strictly necessary. Sorry and I, felt like it was really important that no one felt pressured to finish the pullover during the knit along time period because as makers this is something that really is meant to bring us joy and peace and we don't want anyone to feel pressure to you know take this slow craft and turn it into something that has to be done fast and in a stressful way <laughs> so do remember that about the knit along that finished objects are not required to enter at all. I wanted to show y'all a few books that I pulled out. I realized I actually have a big collection of knitting books. That is something that I love. I, I have a, a couple of sewing books and I have some knitting books. They bring me so much joy even to just look through because sometimes I get a lot of inspiration. Maybe it's not necessarily a pattern that I want to make right now, but I love the color from the pattern and I will put that into use into the next thing that I decide I want to knit because that color really spoke to me. So I get a lot of inspiration from flipping through my knitting books. Um, a couple of them that I pulled out are a few Sandus Garn magazines. I probably have four or five Sandus Garn, but this one is number 2204. And it's the Summer Knit for Women. I'm trying to see if it tells what year it is. This is the cover of it. And the number is 2204. So that should at least, that should be everything you need to find it if you're interested in it. But the pattern here on the front was something that I found very weather appropriate. Uh, there's a lot of other things in here that I plan on making at some point, but it's even a cute bag. I think this is called the Hele Summer Vest. I'll put the name on the screen. And it comes in sizes extra small through 3XL, which I really like because um, they also have... I bought a book for that Amy Slipover, and it is a one size only, which I don't like because I think even for a slipover... You know, we need it to fit us in the correct way. Okay, here we go. It has size extra small, medium, large, and 3XL. So, not the best, but hey, four sizes is better than the one size for the other one. And as I'm reading through here, I see that it's not in English. Did I forget that? Is English at the front? Yes. Yes. English is up here. Okay. <laughs> yes. So it's the Hele Summer Hella Hele Summer Vest. And um, it calls for the Mandarin Petite Knit, which is 100% cotton yarn. Oh, it looks like maybe it's only two sizes. One size is extra small through medium, and the other size is large through 3XL. Is that correct? Anyway, 
I'm gonna dig deeper through that but I I really like this pattern and I have been interested in making that this spring I don't have a yarn I have a lot of yarn that I could potentially use for it but I haven't decided on anything it just definitely got my juices flowing <laughs> um the pattern I really like in this is because String Things by Mel recently made this sweater and I pulled my book back out to give it another look. Even though I had this book, um, I really didn't have any plans to make this sweater, but I saw hers. I think the reason I got this book was because of one of the cardigans in it actually. But whenever I saw Mel make her Haley Genzer, I was like, oh, that's going on my list. I have a lot. It, it calls for double Sunday and 10 silk mohair. I can't use mohair and I don't like using fluff a lot. But I have a lot of double Sunday and I also have a lot of Sunday, which I could hold double. And I think that I actually get an e a little bit of a bigger gauge with the double Sunday. Nope, with the Sunday held a double than even with the double Sunday. So I think that would be a pretty good alternative to that with mohair. So maybe at some point. I also got my Moosh and Friends book out because everybody's making such cute little things from it. And I, okay, my kiddos have picked out, like they want one of everything, which let's be honest, is never gonna happen. <laughs> because these things are knit on size one needles or size zero needles. I can't even remember now. Um, but my favorite is the little duck, Nana. I just think it's adorable, especially with that vest. And also Aggie, the sheep, so cute. So those are two, whoops, was my hand covering that the whole time? So they were definitely um, wanting me to make that for them and I think that I'm going to try at some point to get that done. I need to, this is going to be a stash yarn project. So I'm going to go into my yarn cabinet and pick out some of the perfect yarns to make that and I think it'll be a great way to use them up. Okay, I have no uh, yarn acquisitions to show you this week, which is good because I'm trying to use what I have. <laughs> but one thing I do want to show you is something that I find very, very exciting. And it is a needle binder from Thread and Maple. It's just so stunning and so luxurious. I just... I'm absolutely blown away with the amazing quality of this. So this was very kindly gifted from Thread and Maple so that I could try it out and see what I thought about it. And I can tell you what I think about it. It's amazing. <laughs> so they let me pick out four pages to put in the needle binder. And this is the whiskey color, which is incredibly gorgeous it has a magnetic closure here and it has this really pretty logo threaded maple but it's very um low profile on there so i think that that just adds to the really luxurious quality of it so you open it up and you have some storage options here and then you i put four pages in here and you could fit four more it is so nice so um the first one that i have i'm going to take it out here so this is the notions page and i just want to show you something that's so cool about this is when you take it out you can close it up and these right here um you can just do that where each one is open on a different side and snap it shut and it becomes a stand alone. So even if you just wanted to order this and not order the whole um, organizer, each of these little pages are like standalone cases as well. 
Okay, but so cool because they actually send you these notions in the page. A ruler, a pen, scissors, needles. It's so, so cool. I love it. Also, some stitch markers and a little pouch to put a few of your little accessories in or notions. So, the thought that has went into this is really outstanding. I also got a fixed circular page. Is I have so I have like the Luca driftwood interchangeables that I don't use very often, but um, I mainly have just collected this big pile of chow goo fixed circular needles over the last five years or so um, in all sizes. Someday I'm going to be able to buy the whole interchangeable set from Chow Goo, but my fixed circulars are working well for me at the moment. But I do use my Luca needles sometimes, and so I got the page for them as well. And I just, I'm like, wow, every little detail that they have thought through is amazing. And I got a page for cables, which have all these little zippered pouches. Everything about this is just very well thought out and very well executed. And I can truly say, yes, this was gifted, but I promise you, my honest opinion is that this is amazing. So I'm going to continue to use this. And on the next few episodes, I will show you how I'm using it and let you know more thoughts on it as I continue to have it be a part of my daily knitting journey and let you know if I still just think so highly of it in a few weeks. Just truly absolutely beautiful. So thank you Olga for sending this to me. Thank you so much Thread and Maple. It is an absolutely beautiful design and in such a special way to hold some of our beloved knitting tools. All right, y'all, I am recording this quite a few days in advance. Editing me, future Casey, is going to come in and type the winner of the Primrose Yarn Co. Fiber, which I showed last week. So I finished one whole bobbin. Wow, where'd my bobbin go? So I finished one whole bobbin or half of a braid, and I think it turned. I think it just turned out so lovely. And I am halfway through the other half of the braid. And like I said, I just wasn't here to be able to spin that for much of the week this last week. But I do plan on finishing that up. I could finish that up today. And then I'll let the second bobbin rest and I will apply my singles together in a day or two after that. So I'm very excited and I hope that the winner absolutely loves their braid. Um, I wanted to wait and choose the winner until Wednesday night because I did want to give it a full week since I mentioned that you could enter it until my next podcast. So Wednesday night, I'm going to have the um, all of the entries in the prize chooser and I'll place that. I'll have put that on the screen. Thank you all so much for entering. I wish I could send it to all of you and I'm so sorry that I can't. Uh, but thank you so much for watching this channel. Thank you if you're returning. The fact that you come back means so much to me and I could not do this without your continued support. So thank you so much. If you enjoy videos like this, then please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. It really does help my channel out and it ensures that you won't miss any future video content. Anna from Brook Willow has continued to spin fluence me and force me into spindle spinning. I'm like, even Andrew Mowry didn't quite push me over the edge, but Anna from Brook Willow, she just practically forced me to start spindle spinning. <laughs> so we'll all blame her. Um, no, but I, I'm hoping that next week I can show you some of the spindles that I have gotten. I'm excited to 
kind of dive more deeply into that craft. Hopefully Anna is going to teach me all about it. <laughs> and I'm also going to do a few of the School of Sweet Georgia classes. So I'm looking forward to that. And I hope to share more about that next week and a little bit more of what I have been up to. So until next Thursday, I hope you all have a wonderful week and happy knitting.